coming up, one of rock's greatest vocalists tells us the firsthand account of a song that's really become part of rock folklore. This is really cool. Now, first of all, her record label set up a publicity stunt that led to her being harassed by a radio promoter. So she was so outraged, so livid, she went straight to her hotel room and she wrote a seething rock masterpiece. This rocker tells us the story as well as several other original members from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame band. They also are part of it. It's coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you remember being really excited around the holidays, you know, for the only three TV channels that we had, and they were showing that special programming. You're gonna love this nostalgic channel. The story straight from the legends, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Make sure to click the bell, do your thing, subscribe, all that good stuff. Also check our content on our Patreon page and our new merch, you're gonna love it. So it's time for another edition of our series, Revelations, where iconic artists legendary artists and bands reveal the finest details behind the songs and albums that have moved us from childhood to now. Today we're going to get the story behind a little ditty from the 70s called Barracuda from Ann Wilson of Heart. Barracuda. Also original band members, uh, bassist Steve Fawson and the song's co-writer and drummer Michael DeRozier. Now, years after Heart Form, they started to take over radio. I mean, it all started with their classic debut album, Dream of Annie. Heart's first single from that album was How Deep It Goes. How deep it goes. That didn't do very well. This is when it was released in Canada by the Small Mushroom label in 1975. But the second single, Magic Man, backed with How Deep It Goes. That was first picked up for radio play by a station in Montreal. This is while the band was on tour playing small club dates. In America, Crazy On You it was the first single. Yeah, followed quickly by Magic Man. Never, which that would become Hart's first top 10 hit and it started a spark that would lead to 20 top 40 hits and nine platinum albums, and also induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm here tonight to induct an amazing band, and they also happen to be my hometown heroes, a band called Heart. Many would argue that the crown jewel of Heart's classic catalog was the song that would come after they broke through with Crazy On You and Magic Band. I'm talking about the ultra rock classic Barracuda, the song we're gonna talk about today. It came from a crazy incident that was started by Hart's label Mushroom. Ann Wilson's gonna tell you the story. Her sister Nancy admitted a few years ago that she actually borrowed the riff from the band Nazareth. She said, and I quote, we've been opening for a band called Nazareth in Europe and also for Queen. And Nazareth had a hit with uh, Joni Mitchell's song that they covered in 73 called This Flight Tonight uh, that had uh, kind of that riff. So we borrowed from that and we made it into Barracuda and we saw the guys from Nazareth later and they were really pissed. They said, you took our riff. You know, but as Nancy would go on to say in this interview, uh, everybody influences everybody. Back then, you, you borrow from what you loved and, and you made it your own. She also talked about in that interview how the guitar tone is very specific and she sometimes has a tough time recreating it in concert. Let's get into this interview with Ann Wilson and also Steve Fawson, uh, original bassist, and Michael DeRozier, who helped co-write the song. As we get into this interview and story, do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear. Tell you what, add some style to your life and your look with the latest Zenny frames. They're adding new ones to their collection all the time, and the price so cost effective. I mean, you can get several pair for less than a vinyl record. Download the Zenny app today and order from there. Here's Ann Wilson and Co. with the story of Barracuda. Mm -hmm. 
before that explosion that became Dreamboat Annie and Heart, women were kind of pigeonholed to be soft rockers or singer songwriters, yeah. kind of like Melissa Manchester, that kind of thing. And you guys kind of turned that on its head. Yeah, at that time, uh, it was really, truly a man's business. Mm -hmm. um, there were some women doing it. Joan Baez, Fleetwood Mac was just starting to come out. Judy Collins, and of course the Disco Divas, Donna Summer. But you had to choose between, there's this really strong feeling in the 70s where you couldn't be just a music fan, you had to choose between disco and rock. Right. And if you were a disco person, you were shunned by rockers and vice versa. You had to just declare yourself. So, yeah. <laughs> so there were no women rockers. You could be folk or disco, but yep. not rock. No rock. I think Susie Quattro was in Detroit doing it. Yeah. But she was the only one. They would play one female an hour on the radio. And then right. That was pretty much it. There's so many urban legends. That's what's cool about Heart, just yeah. like the Beatles and other artists where you talk about, some say it was a promoter, some say it was a reporter that backstage asked you about the picture and made a, a horrible sexist statement. Influence, and, yeah. And then that influenced... Barracuda. Yeah. yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, there's so much opportunity for, for urban myth and rumor and everything. And now you introduce women into the picture and that makes, you know, makes the pot even richer. Here we are backstage, we're opening up for the Kinks in Detroit. And we just had done our set. And so as with most opening bands on the way up, after your set, your dressing room is just full of people, you know. Mm -hmm. Back then they called them rack jobbers. <laughs> and, you know, guys whose job it was to, to glad hand and meet you. Exactly, And, and yep. you say hi to them so that they have the uh, will to go out the, the instinct and the, they're behind you. So, so I was talking to this one guy and he said to me, so how's your love life going? How's your, how's your lover? And I, you know, I thought he was referring to my yeah. man. My yeah. boyfriend. And I said, oh, he's fine. Oh, everything's great, you know. No, 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 no. You, you and your sister. You know what I'm talking about. You and your sister. Oh, jeez. You know, and by today's standards, that's not such a shocking, insulting right. thing. You know, incestuous lesbianism. But for back then, it made me live it because oh, yeah. I love my sister. Mm -hmm. and, and we were purists and we were almost missionary in our artistry zeal. You know, we wanted to go out there and say our words and be taken seriously. Yeah. Not just seen as a couple of lesbian sisters, you know, like fun to watch. <laughs> yeah. And so that pissed me off. I was honestly made really angry by that. So I went back to the hotel and wrote the words to Barracuda. And it was the first moment too, I think I realized what kind of business we were in. It's become one of your signature songs. I mean, it's been used in Charlie's Angels. And Glee did their version of it. You had me down, 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 down on my... Did Barracuda come first, kind of the title, or did it just pour out the lyrics? How did that come about? The title came first. Yeah. It's just a, a mean, slithering, dangerous thing. Barracuda. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest accomplishment for me, and I think Nancy would say the same thing, is just keeping a hold of ourselves. Because the whole thing of, do you have number one hits? Do you not have number one hits? What do you look like? Who are you? What do you sound like? You know, are you popular? Or are you relevant? All that stuff can really s stir up your, um, your mind stir up your soul. If you can keep a hold of yourself, then I'd say that's an accomplishment. The galloping thing was just a kind of a beat and a, and a pattern that, that we kind of horsed around with. I used to carry a tape recorder around and tape stuff on occasion. Uh, Mike thought it would be a good idea for us to record some of the ideas, that, a couple of the things that we had done by way of Mike, I guess, Anna Nancy checked it out and thought, yeah, that's a good foundation for a song idea, so. Again, 
And then I, I think we probably did some of the weird uh, time signature stuff, maybe in the kind of assembling all the parts. So yeah, just sort of bits and pieces kind of thrown together. And I, I think it was that song was was one of those things where when it was done, we kind of knew that it was pretty cool. So it came really out of a jam? Yeah, the, the initial idea for it, yeah. Co-writer. He got co-writer credits on Barracuda. Yeah. yeah. Michael DeRozier. A drummer. <laughs> Imagine that. Well, I mean, that's a huge part of the song. It's just one of those songs that the second that you hear it, just the first note, you know exactly oh, yeah. what yeah. it is. It's something that we debated a lot uh, when we were kind of discussing, hey, should a drummer be involved in writing or should he get credit for some some a bit of uh, input or, or whatever? And it's a, it's a very kind of, it's not, I always looked at it like this is not Tin Pan Alley. It's not like a guy banging out stuff on a piano and some guy barking out some lyrics. A rock band has got a different dynamic. Sure. And... And I think the line between arranging and writing is very thin. No, you're right. Uh, so a lot of bands like REM, for example, they just say all songs by REM because they yeah. realize that all of them have the input because it, it can become a totally different song when mm -hmm. you bring in a little kernel of an idea. Yeah. What do you remember about recording it once it, it got brought in and, and you started to put it down on tape? Well, I, I did my part in Studio B, the, the little studio. I don't know. Did you do yours in the little studio or the big studio? Do you remember? I think it was the I think it was the big room because we were trying to get more more uh, room sound in the in the drum mix. Yeah, I think I was by myself in there. Yeah, I, I think you're right because then we were in Studio B. Mm -hmm. You know, the guitar players and bass and. And was doing the scratch vocal. At the time, to me, obviously the result of the of the lyrics were, is was a great thing for us. So I can't really complain about it. But it seemed like a tempest in a teapot to me, because the, the for to think that two sisters were having a relationship like that. I don't think it would ever happen. I think that Ann and Nancy's uh, sort of in general, their view of the of the business part of, of record business, uh, they didn't have a, maybe a lot of respect for a lot of the guys that, that were a certain level. I always read that Nancy was inspired by this flight, uh, tonight. Uh, this flight tonight. No. Tell me about that. Is that is well, there any truth to that? Well, it was it was Raj that came up with the the kind of the ching, 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 all that dun, 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 dun. stuff. And I I never I can't swear to it. I never asked him. Hey, did you think of that from the from this flight tonight or from because there's probably a half a dozen songs that do that, if not more. And this flight tonight, I mean, to get really technical about it, it's the way that the drums are, it's just straight. It's just, it's just a quarter notes on the bass drum. And I'm doing a whole kind of syncopated thing. Kind of goes more with the guitar. Mm -hmm. So that in itself is way different. Although it's probably closer to immigrant song than it is this flight tonight. But it's still different than that too. Well, it's interesting because there are a lot of, of riffs that sound similar in classic yeah. rock, and that's okay. You can't actually um, copyright a riff. You can only copyright a melody and a lyric. Mm. You can't copyright a riff. So a lot of songs yeah. that sound the same with the riff, as far as I understand from yeah. copyright law. Yeah, Bonanza. That's right. Similar. That's where we got it. It's similar. So, I mean, 
it's 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 a it's there's probably classical music that has oh, yeah. elements of that in it too. So. The double A side of your life that you leave to people, what would that be? What two songs would be on that? Because you talk about balance. What would those two songs be? Um, double A side, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, Barracuda would be on one side. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment about Ann Wilson, one of the greatest voices ever, Ann Hart, and this legendary song. I mean, that riff, that classic vocal, what are your memories and your thoughts on the song and the band? What is your favorite period of heart, 70s, the 80s, or the 90s? To hear the song, click on the link below. If you like our content, we invite you to subscribe. Be part of this community. We'd love to have you, and you get all these cool interviews. Until next time, I'm telling you three chords and the truth, my friends. Talk to you soon.